This video is going to introduce you to the velocity and acceleration as a vector activity. We've already talked about how a velocity is a vector, which means it has size and direction as opposed to speed, which is not a vector, it's a scalar. We'll talk about that more in the next unit, actually. And it only has size. So if I'm going 50 miles per hour, that is speed. If I'm going 50 miles per hour north, that has size and direction, so that is a vector. Now you may not know it, but you're already familiar with how vectors operate. When we do our old friend the Pythagorean Theorem, we are treating distance as a vector. So we usually talk about x and y, but for this unit we might as well get used to x is always distance. So x sub x is distance in the x direction, x sub y is distance in the y direction, and for this lab, we're actually going to talk about xd, which is more diagonal distance. Now, we added an angle in there, which I'm going to go back so we can see. If we put an angle in there, then we can do our trig. So I put an angle there, and now we're going to have the fight. Now, from our trig days, which everybody in here has had trig, we should know the following. With Pythagorean's theorem tells us that if we square the x, the distance in the x direction and the distance in the y direction, we get the hypotenuse, which is our diagonal. So x to the x sub x squared plus x sub y squared will be x sub d squared. From our trig, if you remember, if you multiply the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle, you get the y. The sine goes with the y. So if I take x d, so my xy equals my xd times my sine of theta. My xx, my, x, my distance in the x direction, equals my hypotenuse distance times the cosine of the angle. And the last thing that I want to view that we had from trig is that the tangent of the angle is equal to the y distance divided by the x distance. Now you had all this in trig. We, in fact, you probably had you had the Pythagorean theorem back in middle school math. So we're used to dealing with that when it comes to the direction. So the purpose of today's lab is to see do all these do these four relationships hold with when we deal with velocity. Now before we get to that, let's look at what this information tells us. If you had a person standing at this corner of the triangle and they walk in the x direction, then they walk in the y direction, they wind up at the other point of the triangle. If you have Mr. Blue person standing at the same spot and they walk along the diagonal, they will wind up in exactly the same spot. If you covered this part up and you only had saw two people standing with, by each other, you would have no way of knowing whether they took the x, y path or they took the d path. So we call this the resultant, the shorter path, the hypotenuse. Later on, we'll do, deal with this a lot more in the next unit. That's the resultant. And the idea is that if you take the x in the x direction and the y in the y direction, if you add those up pictorially, you get this distance. There's no dif difference as far as where you wind up between going left and up or just going straight to the point. So our question is, does the same thing apply to velocity? If I have a velocity in the x direction and I have a velocity in the y direction, will that give me, if I square this velocity and square the y velocity, will that give me the, the uh, same velocity as somebody going uh, along the hypotenuse? So if I measured, took the definition of velocity, if somebody measured my velocity from here to here, and somebody else measured the velocity from here to here and here to here, would these velocities, if you square them, will they add up to my hypotenuse velocity? Also, will these other relationships hold? If I know how fast I'm going this direction, can if I know how fast I'm going this direction, can I find out how fast I'm going this direction by using the angle? And using, can I take for the velocity in the x direction times the velocity in the d direction and time can I take let's back this up can I take the velocity in the diagonal direction the straight the direction the car is going velocity multiplied by the cosine of this angle would that give me this velocity so today's lab we're going to take these measurements and we're going to see if these relationships hold